Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, we're going to talk about the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, Volume 1, 1929 to 1964, edited by Robert Silverberg. Why 1929 to 1964? Well, let's hear it from Robert Silverberg. In the introduction, this is as nearly definitive an anthology of modern science fiction stories as is likely to be compiled for quite some time. Its contents were chosen by vote of the membership of the Science Fiction Writers of America, an organization of some 300 professional writers whose roster includes virtually everyone now living who has ever had science fiction published in the United States. The book you now hold represents the considered verdict of those who themselves have shaped science fiction, a roster of outstanding stories selected by people who know more intimately than any others what the criteria for excellence in science fiction should be. The SFWA was founded in 1965, and they award each year the Nebula Awards. So now we know the answer to the 1964 year. That was the year, and previous to it, that there were no Nebula Awards. But why 1929? Well, the roster of 26 stories in this book come from selections by that membership. At first, they nominated stories, and the earliest story nominated was 1929. Although that story did not make it into the final collection, it represented a first story or year that was being considered. Sadly, there were no nominees earlier than 1929. I really think that H.G. Wells would be well represented in this book. So after a list of nominees was assembled, they had a vote. Here are the top 10 vote-getters excluding any duplicates of authors. Only one short story per author would be in the anthology. The top 10 are Nightfall, by Isaac Asimov, A Martian Odyssey by Stanley Weinbaum, Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes, Microscopic God, Theodore Sturgeon. It was tied with First Contact by Murray Leinster. Number six, A Rose for Ecclesiastes by Roger Zelazny. And then we had four short stories tied for the seventh spot. The Roads Must Roll by Robert Heinlein, Mimsy Were the Borough Groves by Lewis Paget, Coming Attraction, Fritz Leiber, and The Cold Equations by Tom Godwin. These stories were all included in the anthology. From this point on, there were a number of duplicates by the same author. Silverberg would first look at which story of that author's had received the most votes. In the case of Ray Bradbury, he had four short stories highly ranked. Silverberg asked Bradbury which story he would like to represent him. In the case of another author, he was having difficulty gaining the rights to the story. William Tenn's short story, Child's Play, was well up in the voting, but was not included in the anthology. So you can see that Silverberg had a bit of work to do in editing this anthology. This, however, may be one of the greatest anthologies ever published. Every story is an amazing story from 1929 to 1964. Following his publication, Ben Bova edited Volume 2 with novellas. It was printed in two books, Volume 2A and Volume 2B. Here is a box set with all three books. Whatever edition you have, these volumes continue to be a cornerstone of any serious science fiction collector. There are 26 stories, and what I propose to do is break this up into three parts. Today's video is an introduction, and we'll take a look at the first six stories. Stanley G. Weinbaum's story, A Martian Odyssey, appeared in the July 1934 issue of Wonder Stories. To the modern reader, it appears to be a travelogue across the Martian landscape. An astronaut's rover vehicle has a breakdown, and he must find his way by foot back to the spaceship. He encounters many different creatures, and these creatures are interesting creations of biology and ecology. 
After rescuing one creature from a predator, it accompanies him on his journey. It is a bizarre creature which can leap high into the air and come down like a spear on its beak and long neck. It really is a comical image if you think about it. What really makes this story stand out is this xenobiology of Weinbaum. Previously, we would have Martians wanting to destroy Earth or humans, or perhaps dangers along the journey. These were just creatures or beings in their natural habitat. We were the alien. So in 1934, this was a very revolutionary way to depict beings from Mars. Twilight by John W. Campbell, 1934. It appeared in Astounding Stories, November 1934. You'll notice that Campbell used a pseudonym, Don Stewart. Their summary, a world confused, millions of years from now, brings a strange confusion to a story, but the confusion fades to be succeeded by a spellbound fascination. A man picks up a hitchhiker and finds that he's picked up a time traveler from the year 3059. He is a scientist who overshot his goal in time travel and came back to 1932. During the car ride, he describes the future in detail. This is one of those stories where you consider the wonder of the future, what could be. Also, you consider the stagnation of humanity. Just a few years after the publication of this story, John W. Campbell became editor of Astounding Magazine. His influence shaped the Golden Age, and you can see this story as a major influence or template for what he expected from his writers. Helen O'Loy by Lester Del Rey Oh, she said, then, you're Phil, aren't you? Dave told me about you, that you helped make me. In this story, two scientists purchase a female robot. They program her to be self-aware, trying to create the perfect woman. One of the scientists falls in love with this woman and is married. As time goes on, they have a problem. The scientist ages, but Helen does not. This is Helen's story. The Roads Must Roll by Robert Heinlein. It was first published in the June 1940 issue of Astounding Science Fiction. The story is set in the near future with road towns. These are platforms similar to moving sidewalks that you might find in an airport. But each platform is graduated in speed. You can move up these platforms until you're in a middle platform that's going 100 miles per hour. This has changed transportation in the United States. The roads must roll. The technicians are very important. What if they become unionized? Could they have strike action which would stop the roads from rolling? This is a precursor to some of the Robert Heinlein stories that we see in the future. It reminded me a bit of The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. What power does a union have when it controls the most vital of transportation? Can they take action which can kill people and hold a society hostage. Microcosmic God by Theodore Sturgeon first appeared in Astounding Science Fiction, April 1941. There are two protagonists to this story, a brilliant biochemist named Kidder and a banker named Conant. The biochemist is brilliant and comes up with many inventions and patents that soon make him rich. He purchases an island and does all his research in private. He only contacts the banker to release new technology. The banker oversteps his role, and the bank itself becomes the wealthiest bank in the world. What's the secret to the biochemist coming up with so many inventions? He's created a microbiological species held within a terrarium of sorts. This species has quickly gone through evolution and has gone into intelligence, and he acts as their god and asks them to develop things in their accelerated time frame. But what happens when the banker comes to the island seeking to steal more technology? Will he discover the secret? And what kind of god is this biochemist? Nightfall by Isaac Asimov appeared in Astounding Science Fiction, I think you're seeing a trend here, in September of 1941. Astounding editor John W. Campbell asked Asimov if he would write a story about a quotation from Ralph Waldo Emerson. 
If the star should appear one night in a thousand years, how would men believe and adore and preserve for many generations the remembrance of the city of God? Campbell's opinion was to the contrary. He said, I think men would go mad. This yielded one of the most classic science fiction stories of all time. A planet in a multi-star system, six suns. There is never night. There is always a sun in the sky. The only darkness that occurs would be in caves or rooms with no windows. Researchers have found evidence that there has been multiple advanced civilizations on their planet that have collapsed every 2,000 years or so. Their theory? There is a brief moment in astronomical time where there is no sun in the sky. What happens when night falls? Taking a look at these first six stories, the standouts for me were the last three. I found Heinlein's concept of transportation, these roads that roll, to be fascinating. And there is a catastrophe that is spectacular. Microcosmic God is a very clever story. And Nightfall brings wonder and fear to a story. I did enjoy the xenobiology of a Martian odyssey. In particular, Tweel. That's the name of the bird-like creature. I was disappointed with the pick of Twilight for John W. Campbell. I've read the best of John W. Campbell Jr. And I would say that Who Goes There is head and shoulders above this story. The only thing I'm not sure about is if Who Goes There is actually a novella. Helen O'Loy is a story of its time. Of these six stories, I think it becomes the most dated. Stay tuned for part two and three of this mini-series on the Science Fiction Hall of Fame short stories. I'll cover ten more stories in each of the videos. So do you have any thoughts about the selection of stories? Which story of the six that I talked about today is your favorite? In looking at the list of 26 authors, do you feel that there is an author that's been overlooked that should be on that list. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.